Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very glad, Robin, with a, a, a very good oh, piano. You really brought the best out of it. We have a few things we need to share this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, there's a note to uh, myself and the whole congregation. We are so grateful to the pastor and church family for all the prayers, cards, telephone calls, and acts of kindness during the loss of our son. We're so thankful for everyone, Dick, Ruth, and family Hunsinger. Also, Sherry Courtney is not doing well at all at this time. Uh, she couldn't be weaned off of the support systems that, they're, that are keeping her alive at this point. So her three sons have a very difficult and terrible decision to make, uh, whether to take her off of life support and allow her to pass or to transfer her to a nursing home. So please be in prayer for the three boys as they wrestle with this uh, very difficult decision. Also, the Guild has decided not to meet tomorrow. Uh, so underline that they've decided not to meet. The call to worship. Come, let all of God's people gather together for worship. Even when we were yet lost in our sins, Christ died to give us life. So let our hearts proclaim God's redeeming love to everyone we meet. friends in the life of Jesus Christ showed us the kind of love you would have to us share with all those around us. Help us, Lord, do as we have asked. Our first hymn is Ferris, Lord Jesus. Oh uh -huh. 
that song represents the beginning of my Christian faith, my grandfather's favorite hymn. Let us join in the invocation. Christ is with us. Let us pray. O oh God, friend of all who seek you, and seeker of all who have not yet turned towards you, draw near to us as we seek to draw near to you. Grant us your grace so that we may love and serve you as we should. Help us to find in your will for us our true freedom. This we ask in Jesus' name, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. God, in your mercy, let us confess our sins unto God. Lord, so often we have been so involved in the daily events around us that we have lost sight of the wonderful gift you have given us. In the guidance and leadership of your Holy Spirit, we have completely ignored the task that you have wanted us to be doing in your name. We have been too busy, too timid, or too afraid of offending those around us. Forgive us, Lord. Give us the courage to boldly share your love with those we meet, and lead us to do what you have called us to do. Share the good news of your gospel and love with everyone we meet. In his name we pray, amen. Let us lift up to God our private personal prayer request during this moment of silence. In Jesus' name we pray. Since we are justified by our faith in Jesus Christ alone, through him may we find peace with God and one another. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Lord, open our hearts and minds to the power of your Holy Spirit, so that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you are trying to say to us this day. Amen. The Old Testament reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. This is what Yahweh says. Listen to the one who created you, to the one who shaped who you are. Do not be afraid, for I, your kinsman and redeemer, will rescue you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you must pass through the deep, stormy seas, you can count on me to be with you. When you must traverse raging rivers, you will not drown. When you must walk through the fiery flames of persecution, you will not be burned. The flames will not harm you, for I am your Savior, the Holy One of the people of God. Since you are cherished and precious in my eyes, and because I love you dearly and want to honor you, I will be the one who will save your life. I am with you now, so do not be given into fear. For I will bring your children from the east, the west, the north, and the south. I will bring my sons and daughters from far away, from the ends of the earth. Bring me everyone who is called by my name, the one I created for experience, my glory. I myself formed them to be who they are and made them for my own glory. The Psalter this morning comes from Act 8, verses 14 through 17. When the apostles of Jerusalem heard that the Samaritans had accepted God's message of life, they sent Peter and John to pray over them so that they would receive the Holy Spirit, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord and still had to have the Holy Spirit fall upon them. 
as soon as Peter and John arrived. They laid their hands on the Samaritan believers, one after another, and the Holy Spirit fell upon them and filled each one of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to be singing two hymns. We're going to have a very brief interlude between the two of them. Each one is one verse long. be seated. The good news reading this morning comes from the third chapter of Luke, the verses 15 and 16 and 21 and 22. During those days, everyone was gripped with the messianic expectations, believing the Messiah would come at any moment, and many began to wonder if John might be the Christ. But John made it clear he was was not by telling them, there is one who is coming that is mightier than I. He is the supreme one. In fact, I'm not worthy even of being his slave. I can only baptize you in this river, but he will baptize you with the spirit of holiness. One day, Jesus came to be baptized along with all the others. As he was consumed by the spirit of prayer, the heavenly realm ripped open wide above him, and the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. It landed on him. Then God's voice was heard, saying, You are my son. I have chosen you. I have marked you with my love. You are the pride of my being. May God add his blessing to hearing his holy word this morning, and we understand his truth for us yet this very day. I would also like to read the story by what, how Matthew interpreted it. Jesus' baptism. 
It's found in the third chapter, verses 13 through 15. Jesus left Galilee to be baptized by John in the River Jordan. When he waded into the water, John protested, Why are you asking me to baptize you? I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you. John re or Jesus replied, It's only right to do all that God requires. The baptism of our Lord. First of all, he didn't need it. He didn't need to be baptized. He was sinless. Baptism, both by the Jews and by Christians, is our response to having confessed our sins before God. For a Jewish baptism, it was after a certain set of sins that we were confessing. And then you might have to be baptized again and again and again as you committed more sins. But it was a cleansing of the past. Of course, for Christian baptism, it's once for all. It baptized for the forgiveness of the sins of our past, our present sins, and our future sins. But it still doesn't make any sense that Jesus was baptized because he was without sin. Think about that. So why would he need to be baptized by John in the River Jordan? Even John protested and said, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute, you don't need this. What are you doing here? Now, as we read that and don't think about all the past, we kind of wonder, like, how would John know that? We'll have to go back to the infant stories to understand. Remember when Mary went to see her cousin Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John? John leapt in the womb because Mary was there, and in her womb was Jesus. So they had a family relationship. And don't think that John wasn't told by his mother Elizabeth as he could learn to know who Jesus was, because Elizabeth was happy not only to have John as her son, but to be related to the mother of the Savior of the world, of the Messiah. So Elizabeth would have told John quite a few times in his lifetime before she passed who Jesus was. Now, the next big question in the life of John is what happens after his parents pass away? Can you imagine a child? He's got to be less than a teenager, probably. How does he live? Does he go out and solicit food on the beg on the streets for food? Does he hide in, in the alleyways to be protected from those who would want to harm him? How did he not end up being enslaved by some other person to be the one who did all the housework. Well, there's a community that we found evidence of near the Dead Sea called Qumran. It's an Essene community, a very specific branch of Judaism. Yeah, Judaism isn't just like Christianity, isn't just one and one all. There's, there's at least three different divisions of Judaism, the Hadassic Jews, the modern Jews and the reformed Jews today. Well, back then it was also divided among many different sects. The Essenes believed that the Messiah was coming and that they needed to separate themselves from the world to be ready for him. So they lived like monks and nuns in the desert near the Dead Sea. Now, if you've ever been in that area, or even if you've seen pictures, you know how desolate. There's absolutely nothing there except rocks and sand. And yet, here's a community surviving. That means they had to import their food, they had to import their water, and they didn't get it from the Dead Sea. <laughs> The concentration of salt in the Dead Sea is deadly. <laughs> you can swim in the Dead Sea and not sink. 
It is just not life supporting. So they weren't getting their life from the Dead Sea. They were transporting it in. And as we talked about before, there's a place in that community where there was dug out a place for baptism. So they knew about baptism. That's not unusual. They, they knew about baptism. Jews used it throughout their whole religion. But again, it was baptism for the past sin. Yet here comes John being trained by the Essenes about the Messiah and knowing who the Messiah is from his family relationships. He's proclaiming in the Jordan River, baptism from your sins. And he's being responded to by the whole community. As we look at the different gospel recounts of what John was doing, we see not only Jews were there, but Gentiles, tax collectors, uh, Jewish priests, uh, army officers, complete all around of the community came to John to be baptized, to be forgiven of their sins. So to have people coming to John was not anything unusual. It was normal. But he saw in the crowd, the one he knew was Jesus, the Messiah. And he says, whoa, wait a minute. You have no sins for which you need to be baptized. What are you doing here? And we have to ask that. Why was Jesus baptized? What was he doing? Why does he say in Matthew, I'm fulfilling the requirements of God? Wait a minute. God's requirements are baptism for forgiveness of sins. How, how, what is this? Well, the prophet Isaiah predicted that this would happen centuries before Jesus was born. He wrote, the Messiah was numbered among the transgressors so that he himself could bear the sins of many and intercede for the transgressors. Ah, he was identifying with us. Think about that. He was God man. He was the son of God, but he was born of Mary. He was a combination of God and humanity. Unique. That's the belief. And to be able to truly represent man, he has to identify himself with humanity. And the way to do that was to be baptized, according to Isaiah. Here, centuries before he was even here, Isaiah is saying, God is saying that Christ must be baptized. Now, Paul, after the events had all taken place, also wrote to the Romans and the Corinthians these two statements. The sinless friend of sinners was sent by the Father in the likeness of sinful flesh so that he could be an offering for the sin of the flesh. Okay? So he came to be like us. Even though he was still God-man and he was still sin-free, he was taking upon that sense so that he was like us. And he also wrote, he who knew no sin became as sin on our behalf so that we might become righteous before God through him. So in other words, he wasn't doing this for himself. I mean, when we get baptized, we're doing it for ourselves. We're, we're confessing our own sins. We're asking repentance of those sins, and we're asking God to bless us with the baptism, with the implementation, implementation of water to wash away the past, the present, and the future. But Jesus wasn't doing that. Jesus wasn't washing away any past, present, or future sins because he was sinless. But he was identifying with you and me so he could carry our sins onto the cross, give his life, be resurrected so that we might have life eternal. Think about that. That's what he was doing. And what's interesting is 
what happened when Jesus came up out of the water? Now, if you happen to walk past the office, you know there's a painting there of the baptism of Jesus Christ. We see him from the back, not his face, but his back, and the water's dripping from his sleeves. And what is above him? What is coming down on his head? A dove. To indicate God's approval of what Jesus dis, just did for you and me. It's God's affirmation that Jesus did what God wanted. So the question becomes, what is our baptisms? And how is God reacting to them? Now, how many here remember themselves being baptized? There's one. Most of us were baptized as children, right? We had no say in it. You know, we could have cried and protested and all kinds of things, but we are still baptized. Why? Because our mothers and our fathers wanted us to have the promise, the opportunity, the availability of forgiveness of our sins. So our parents set in place that opportunity, washed us in pre preparation for our later decisions. Then sometime in our life, following our baptism, we were asked, did you want that baptism to be yours or just your parents? It's called confirmation. Kids, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, you come to a point where you say, yes, that baptism back then was mine. I'm taking it. And I'm asking God to forgive me of all my sins, past, present, and future. And from that point, we then are Christians. We are followers of Christ. We don't need to be baptized again. This was done. We've taken it upon ourselves. We've accepted that what God did for us, what Jesus did for us, is for us individually as well as collectively. That's what the baptism of Jesus Christ means to each and every one of us. May God add his blessing.
Amen. What are the concerns of our church this morning? We have the Hunsinger family, the family of Sherry Courtney, uh, Jack and Diane, uh, Donna's twin sister. Uh, also, Tim Schaefer's father passed away. Any others we know of? Sherry? Sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Martin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So now you're a great grandmother. <laughs> wow. I'm. 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 A, yeah. I, I don't think I'm gonna make that, but I'm. A, I'm a great grandfather because of my granddaughter's uh, birth of a son. Yes. And I saw another. Yes, Gordon. Okay, Gordon's grand, um, grandfather, uncle, was uh, released from the hospital in Hawaii after heart failure. So, any others? Shall we carry all these before God our Father? Gracious God, we come before you because you call us to. You offer to listen. You provide acceptance. You want us to be with you. And so we've come. We've come to share what's on our hearts and minds, and maybe even more importantly, what's on our soul, what we are wrestling with spiritually as well as physically and emotionally. There are many things going on in life, both those that we can predict and those that come so unexpectedly. We thank you that your Holy Spirit resides with us, lifts us up when life is trying to force us down and brings us stability when we tend to take too much credit for what is happening. Lord, help us to be faithful each and every day, that through us, the world may see your love for it. May we add a testimony to your love each and every day. We ask your blessing upon our world. We know it is fraught with many different divisional factors, things warring against each other, ideas fighting each other, mistakes being promoted as truth, truth being ignored. We ask that you lead, guide, and direct your followers in such a way that the world may know that you love us. Love us all. Even those who don't believe in you, you still love. All of this we ask in the name of him who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let us not be led into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll reiterate the things that we need to uh, lift up in the uh, bulletin. You find on Monday the word guild. Scratch it. It's not happening. And on Thursday, you see music and worship committee. Well, that happened this Thursday, not next Thursday. So there's no music and worship committee meeting this Thursday. Are there any other announcements we need to share with us each other this morning? Yes, Linda. Okay. Is it on? Yes. Okay. All right. I just want to let all the choir members know that we're going to get together starting February 2nd. 
So hopefully we'll see all the choir members back in the choir room. And any new ones that want to join us, we'll be glad to have you. All are welcome. You don't have to be an expert singer, singer to join us. So hopefully we can go forward and get singing again. Thank you. And, and part of that meeting will be the discussion of how the choir is going to operate, how you're going to deal with masks and spacing and all that kind of thing. So that first meeting is very important. So the uh, February 2nd, uh, 7 o'clock, right, in the evening, uh, meet here. We'll meet our new organist and our new music director. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how we proceed from this point. But we hope everybody can come and participate uh, in the way that's best. If there are no other announcements, we'll close with our final hymn, Warning Cry. church normally sing that hymn? Baptisms. 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 Yes. And the choir usually yes. And choir. <laughs> yes. And who is singing that song? If you really look at it, it's Jesus who's saying those words to the child. We're expressing him with our voices, but it's his spirit that is there. Go now in his peace. Use his blessing to bless others. <clears throat> Go with his name and love each and every day. May God bless you all. Amen. <clears throat>